In this video, we're going to look at caffeine and how caffeine can impact the hair growth cycle. If you want to learn how to take advantage of caffeine as part of your hair care routine, make sure to stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here and welcome to the Hair Guard YouTube channel. If you're new here, we make tons of science-backed videos just like this one on how you can regrow healthy hair and combat hair loss. If you're new here, consider subscribing. The question of the day today is have you ever used a caffeine shampoo and what kind of results have you already seen? Let us know in the comments below. So what we're going to review in this video. Well, caffeine is almost everywhere these days. And in this video, I'm going to go deep into the science of whether caffeine causes hair loss or hair growth and how it can actually do both. Whether it's a beverage like coffee or a sports drink or in shampoos, after watching this video, you'll know how and why to use caffeine to your advantage so you can get thicker, stronger hair and a lower hairline instead of worrying about losing it. This video, video goes deep and calls upon scientific research studies and our own personal experimentation at HairGuard and feedback from others after running the HairGuard website for five years. First things first, what is caffeine? Well, caffeine is a bitter white crystalline stimulant that belongs to a group of naturally occurring alkaloids of the methyl, uh, methyl xanthine class. It is mostly, mostly found in coffee, tea, cola nuts, and cacao beans. Now, according to the Food and Drug Administration, caffeine is used in both prescription and over-the-counter medicines to treat drowsiness, tiredness, and is also known to work well alongside pain relievers. For these reasons, caffeine is very popular among people across all age sets, and chances are you have probably consumed it frequently. So guys, before we show you how you can start using caffeine in a hair care routine, we're going to review the science. We're going to look at how it actually works and how it can benefit your hair. So the first thing that caffeine can do is it can help suppress DHT or dihydrotestosterone. Now, researchers, research has revealed that caffeine is an effective suppressant of androgenetic alopecia, commonly known as male pattern baldness. In one in vitro study, scalp biopsy samples from patients suffering from androgenetic alopecia were cultivated with different concentrations of testosterone and or caffeine for a period of 120 to 192 hours. The biopsies were taken from 14 male patients, ranging in age from 20 to 45. Each page was classified between a stage 3 and 4 on the Norwood Hamilton scale for hair loss. And this is what the Norwood Hamilton scale looks like. So we can see um, it's, it's like a numbering system and then dependent on how far along the um, how far along the boldness has gone on, that's kind of the number that they get. So as I mentioned, these were between stage three and four. So you can see the kind of level that they were at here. Now the cultivated hair follicles were split into three groups. Control, which contained various levels of testosterone, caffeine, which contained various levels, and both, which cultivated in testosterone first and then cultivated in caffeine in various concentrations. Now, after a period of 120 to 192 hours, the follicles were removed and researchers studied hair shaft length to determine the efficacy of caffeine. And we can see some of the results on the right. Now, as shown, the longer the follicle was exposed to caffeine, the longer the hair shaft became. There was even a slight difference in the elongation effects of the two different concentrations, though it's quite negligible. However, this wasn't the only thing that researchers found. Surprisingly, hair follicles that were exposed to caffeine, even after exposure to testosterone, showed positive and significant elongation. Addition of caffeine in amounts as small as 0.001% were found to counteract the suppressive effects of testosterone on hair growth, with higher shaft elongation achieved compared to the control group. Also, caffeine can help to stimulate hair growth. Now, even more than just suppressing the effects of dihydrotestosterone, caffeine has been shown to actually stimulate hair growth in human hair follicles. Let's take a closer look at the research behind this intriguing finding. Now, whole human hair follicles were extracted from the scalps of both men and women. The men were confirmed to be a stage 3 to stage 4 on the Norwood Hamilton scale, while the women were normal. After a 24-hour recovery time, the hair follicles were cultivated in one of three mediums testosterone only, testosterone plus caffeine, or normal medium as a control group. The total culture time was 120 hours. So what did the study teach us? 
Well, caffeine enhanced hair shaft elongation. Just as the previous study showed, the presence of caffeine, even after the hair follicle has been exposed to testosterone, can elongate the shaft. Interestingly, the elongation was shown to be different between men and women. In the previous study, concentrations of caffeine were as low as 0.001%, and they were found to be effective in counteracting the effects of testosterone. However, these were shown to be too high for women, and the concentration was lowered to 0.0005%. This proved to be beneficial, and results were shown to be similar to those of male hair follicles. Also, caffeine prolonged the anagen phase. Now, there are three stages within the hair growth cycle. You've got anagen, catagen, and telogen, which is the active transition and rest phase. In men and women with androgenetic alopecia, the process of follicle miniaturization shortens the anagen phase. This results in less hair growth. Now, by prolonging anagen phase, the effects of dihydrotestosterone can be counteracted. As shown by researchers, this is exactly what caffeine was able to do. When exposed to testosterone, the percentage of male and female hair follicles in anagen phase reduced dramatically to 39 and 55% respectively. When co-incubated with caffeine, though, these percentages raised to 70% in men and to 65 and 60, 63 and 65% in women. This shows that caffeine can not only suppress dihydrotestosterone, but it can also make it possible for the hair follicles to function even in its presence. Also, caffeine stimulated hair matrix uh, keratinocyte proliferation. Now, the hair follicle is a complex organ containing multiple parts that work together to produce hairs from the skin. One major component of the follicle is the hair matrix, which is where the hair shaft are actually produced. Now, within the matrix are cells tasked with producing keratin, the protein that makes up the majority component of hair. One major finding within this study was that caffeine actually stimulated the proliferation of keratinocytes. The above shows an increase in the presence of Ki67, a protein that marks cellular proliferation. As the concentration of caffeine goes up, so too does the amount of Ki67 present within the hair follicles. What does this mean for hair growth? Well, if keratin is necessary for the growth of hair, then an increased presence of keratin producing cells can be beneficial during the anagen phase of hair growth. This can lead to more hairs being produced over time. Caffeine can also be absorbed through the scalp. Researchers from Berlin, Germany and Tashkent, Uzbekistan, recruited six healthy Caucasian men to take part in their study. The goal was to determine the ability of caffeine to penetrate the skin and absorb into the hair follicles. The six volunteers underwent two separate experiments which took place one week apart. In the first experiment, a shampoo with caffeine 1% was applied to a test area on the chest. The follicles in this hair remained open. In the second experiment, a shampoo with caffeine was applied to a test area on the chest and the follicles were then closed with a varnish wax mixture. Now, each volunteer had their caffeine levels tested via blood test before beginning. The shampoo was washed away after two minutes and blood samples were taken at five, 10, 20 and 30 minutes as well as 1, 2, 5, 8, 24 and 72 hours after the caffeine shampoo application. In the first group, it was found that caffeine levels could be detected in the blood as early as 5 minutes post-application. The concentration showed at 6.3 nanograms per milliliter. In the second group, though, caffeine levels were only detected once 30 minutes had passed. Researchers theorized that the inability to permeate the follicles significantly slowed its absorption this shows that when in the presence of follicles, caffeine is able to be significantly absorbed. So what amount of caffeine is actually healthy for your hair? Scientists estimate that you have to consume about 60 cups of coffee, the main source of caffeine, for you to ensure that the amount reaching the hair follicles is significant. However, that would be a detriment to your body and would put you at risk of a heart attack. It is also known to be addictive, and if you take more than two cups a day, you can form a dependence and might experience headaches, anxiety, or even depression. So instead of taking caffeine in the form of drinks, a caffeine-rich solution rubbed on your scalp would be the best treatment for your hair. Luckily, there are caffeinated shampoos out there that you can readily buy. Now, I've, I'm gonna link the Hair Guard Caffeine Shampoo for you in the description. One of the key ingredients is caffeine, alongside other natural ingredients formulated for people with hair loss. So you can go and check that out. 
So guys, that's what we wanted to share with you with the science of caffeine on hair and how it can impact hair growth. Make sure that if you are new here, make sure to hit subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.